OCR GCSE Computer Science, Episode 20, Network Protocols, Part 2. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the network protocols themselves and network layers. For the four bullet points at the top, check out the previous video. So this is just a broad overview of all of the network protocols. We've got TCP IP, HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, POP, IMAP, and SMPT. So let's look at the HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Now, this is, well, first of all, before I go into what it is, there's just a really good PowerPoint resource, and the link will be in the description box explaining this, but here's just a screenshot of it. So what it stands for is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and the one with HTTPS is, is just the secure version of that. So imagine Fran, a customer of your company, would like to visit your company's website from her home computer. How does your company's website show up on her home computer? Well, first, she enters the URL into her web browser. She then presses enter, and then the HTTP sends her request to your company's server. So it acts as the middleman basically between you entering in the URL into the browser to the server. So between the browser and the server, you have the HTTP. And this asks to view the website. So HTTP is an application layer protocol. It formulates and interprets requests between a web client, Fran, and a web server which is where your website is located. So those are HTTPS and HTTP done. You can see a more, a you know, broader overview and summary definition here, which will probably be useful for you to print off. And this is just available online. So let's now look at TCP. Now, TCP or TCP IP is a protocol that most commonly is used on the internet. The TCP IP stack describes how the TCP IP protocol works. So the TCP defines all the rules for how the data is split up into packets. It ensures that all the data is split up into data packets in the same way and it ensures that these data packets are then reassembled back together when it's received at the destination. So it basically ensures that at the sender it's split up and at the receiver it's brought back together. And it also ensures that any data received is the same as the data that's sent. So basically TCP, the transport control protocol, is used whenever you want to send anything across a network. Now, the IP, the Internet Protocol, is put into place to ensure that the packets are directed towards their intended destination in the most appropriate way. Now, if you were ever wondering what is a protocol stack, this is just when you have different protocols that are working together. So that's the top three protocols done. Now let's look at POP3 and IMAP protocols. So POP3 is used when you are downloading emails and this is this, so only downloaded new emails which have been received since you last checked your phone. Whereas IMAP um, uses a copy of your recent emails as well as any previous emails that will be available to view. So what IMAP does that's different to POP3 is that the original email is downloaded and saved onto the computer device, whereas with POP3 you can only see your updated new ones and they are a copy is made but the original is not uh, kept. And you also have SMPT which is used for sending and receiving emails. So that's all of them done. Let's look at layers now. So protocol layering is used to simplify network transitions. By dividing net them into layers and assigning protocols to perform each layer's task. So basically, if you had a big task to do, 
It's the equivalent of dividing them into subtasks to make it easier. And these subtasks, in this case, are called layers. Now, without protocol layering, you would need one huge protocol to take care of every aspect of data transmission. And that means that if there was ever a problem with the entire protocol, you would have to manually go and find it out. But with the layer system, if there was a problem, you could easily identify and edit which whichever layer was problematic. So you've got you've also got here the application transport network and network interface. Sorry the page is a little bit blurry here so I'll come back to that in another video. But let's move on to some exam question practice. So describe what is meant by a layer of network protocols. Let's review the answer. Now, a layer of network protocols is a group of protocols with similar functions, but another definition that you could put is a division of network functionality. Now, another possible exam question is being asked about the benefits of layers, and you could say it allows developers to focus on one area at a time, or it is self-contained, something like that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, I know this is a hard topic, so if you don't understand, I do encourage you to go and watch other YouTubers as well if they have any. But if you did find this particular video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already to know all for GCSE and know all for A-Level. Thank you so much for watching. All the best in your exams and see you soon.